Hey guys, my name is Simpsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Media of the Kingdom's Total War 1212 AD here today on the channel. We have another battle replay. Here today, we've got a 1v1 fort defense between the Kingdom of England and Burgundy defending within the fort. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. Feel free to join the Discord, linked in the description below, as always. And feel free to send me your Total War battle replays. I do preference multiplayer battles firstly, but if you've got a CPU versus AI battle in either DI 1212 AD or in a really good battle or a decent mod, feel free to send it on over. Okay, so what's the scenario for this one? I guess England wants to secure and hold its French holdings in Normandy and Aquitaine, and they've managed to come to they've sort of managed to come to blows with Burgundy. They're both bucking heads, let's say. So the Duchy of Burgundy is defending within the port. Port? Fort. <laughs> oh, it's very late here in Australia. I'm getting tongue tied, my apologies. So it is currently okay. More favoured with the um the English then Burgundy by the look of it. So as the English come further in, Burgundy is now forming up. They're going to have a huge advantage with those arrow towers. But I'm curious to see if the English can break on through the defensive blockade of Burgundy. Some arrow towers already peppering on there as well. But let me know in the comments, who do you think is going to win? The offensive England faction and player, or Burgundy in a defensive block here? So already Burgundy's got some crossbows, arcing their shots up and over the front line. Burgundy has deployed as well some caltrops and pikes to stop the advance. He's even angled some of his infantry there as well. To make sure they don't get wrapped around. So England is pushing for a brutal head-on assault with the Dismounted Knights. Oh, no, he's pulled out at the last minute there. But he is going with a full offensive on this left-hand side. As the English Spears slowly but surely have to push their way on through. But although they've got stakes and caltrops there, it looks like the English Cavalry has not been dissuaded whatsoever or really stopped from that charge as they surge on through the Burgundy Fort. Okay, so they've got some of their own English longbowmen in reserve. They're going to arc their shots up and over the wall and bend it. That's a beautiful shot there by the English bowmen. And they're still mounting on the pressure as well, reducing those burgundy hit points and health on the inside. Can they manage to break through? They're doing quite well. You've got to give it to England. A high octane, high energy charge straight at Burgundy has broken through their defenses. They've made it 5-10 meters from the wall, which is superb for them. And the balance of power is now firmly away from Burgundy. I wonder if they're going to be able to pull this back or hold it off. Or will it be a English victory here today? You'd think if he can hold just a little bit longer time will probably be on his side as he does have arrow towers in support that are still continuing to unload relentlessly rounds at the infantry. However, we've got some Burgundy swordsmen there that are not even looking too fresh against an English cavalry unit and an infantry unit here as well. Burgundy does have a couple units still in reserve. Okay, looks like one of the arrow towers is getting overrun and taken by the English. So that's not good. You've really got to protect those as much as you can because they can get at least a kill every couple of, like, two, three seconds, which is huge, particularly in a fort defense. Burgundy's moving up some axemen there to maybe just try and stop the tower from getting capped and capitulated. So Burgundy is currently burning at the moment. So if they can take this fort, the English, 
you would imagine most of north, western, and maybe some of central France will fall to the English conquest of France this time around. However, Burgundy has made the decision to move some cavalry out to stop those archers supporting the infantry going in, which is a really brave charge here. Burgundy has destroyed one. He can he push on and keep on going and get the other three? But maybe not because the ling English bowmen there saw the charge coming and have really tried to help out their fellow brethren. Sir, we'll hit our own men. Looks like Burgundy's chucking more cavalry out here as well. But his infantry on the inside have capitulated. And unfortunately, an, a tower has been destroyed as well. And the town square is capping. It might just be a little bit too late for Burgundy to try and rescue this one. The, the ascendancy, the momentum is all with the English, unfortunately. As now they storm and push on in to the town square. Or the fort square, rather. Crossbows are going to quickly get some shots loosed off there. Or the bolts, rather. But Burgundy is only holding in a couple crucial areas. And the English just really keep on gaining ground and momentum quite quickly. Good looking battle map as well. Nice blue sky. Kind of dry here in Burgundy. But looks like the English banner is about to be brought on up as the Burgundy Cavalry couldn't even get those three arch units on the outside and there's only one Burgundy unit remaining now three a couple have recovered but it looks like Burgundy now are in a full retreat and that's it she's all over Red Rover it's now 90 95 percent in favor of the English opposition so the Kingdom of England look like they're gonna win this one without a shadow of a doubt. So pat yourself on the back if you thought England was going to beat up Burgundy. To be fair, England are a major faction. They probably bought more of a diverse and better army build, but you would never sort of underestimate a defender, regardless if it's a siege, a port city, or a fort. The defender usually has all the advantages. But this time around, the English were able to overcome the Burgundy front. So it was a decisive defeat on Burgundy. Okay, let's go through the casualties sustained and inflicted, and let's go through the stats. So, Burgundy deployed 200 less than England. They deployed 1,960, the English 2,170. So, Burgundy lost 1.6k, while the English lost 530. Okay, so what got most of the kills for Burgundy? The crossbows and the cavalry when they were put in, their spearmen didn't really hold out. Um, the the fists of the father, William, um, managed to destroy the Burgundy, the right hands. So two star commander each. William got 92 kills in his general bodyguard, so he his general bodyguard was put to use rather than Burgundy's. They outnumbered them cavalry-wise, the English. And they had the longbowmen over than the burgundy crossbows. Infantry-wise, those men-at-arms and dismounted knights were probably the difference. 38, 48 there. But to be fair, even the English weaker spearmen outperformed the burgundy ones, which is interesting. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this short little fort battle. Stay tuned for more Total War battle replays across all Total Wars. Once again... Discord is linked in the description below if you guys would like to submit your battle replays. Of course, there are some rules, so you do have to read that before posting. But apart from that, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Stay tuned for more Total War battles and campaigns here, here on the channel. Stay tuned, fellas. Okay, guys, I'm going to play the outro now. Take care. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you want to stay connected with me. I also want to say thank you to this month's patrons and channel members. Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tao, Lion B, Kyle P, Tom C and White P. My name has been Simsy. Much love from Australia. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>